Proverbs 11 and verse 21, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Kalhalal Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rechach Kodash, double honors, the apostles and elders of great millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations, sir, brothers, on down teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the world. Waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. We call this lesson, uh, maybe a combination of these words here, the righteous seed, a sure seed from the beginning. It's all mapped out. Esau Edom currently calling himself the white man. He's got this God complex. It's playing itself out in the earth. Reality. Just a moment here. It's this reality, it's playing itself out good and evil. And it's just interesting as we're closing in on the the credits going up on this man's period of rulership. What man? An Edomite. That's his biblical nationality. And he's just got this inferiority complex against his brother, Jacob. And that's who we are. Our power, his name is Yahweh. His only begotten son is Yahweh Shai. And we're not going to stop calling those names. It's infuriating to some because they've got another name in their mouth. We trace our lineage back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It doesn't matter what we look like. It's nothing to do with colors. Someone's nationality cannot be reduced down to colors. No, it's a sure seed. A righteous seed. That's who Jacob is. Isa Edom knows full well that he's not the most high. He never will be. But he's got this uh, wicked spirit and he just wants to decimate to totally destroy all of the Most High's creation and especially his chosen people. And let's get Sirach. Sirach 10. We have one verse here. So much in this chapter here. They that fear the Lord. Who's that? Who is it that actually fears Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai? They that fear the Lord are a sure seed. It's Jacob. And they that love him, an honorable plant, they that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. Who's that? He's got our book in his hand and he's committing all manner of wickedness, unthinkable, unimaginable madness that is coming out of this man and his headquarters over there, Babylon the Great, it's America. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. That's what devil means. Liar, deceiver, slanderer. That's why, why we call this so-called white man the devil that the Bible speaks of. We're gonna get some more of this in uh, Psalms 37. Get a few verses here going from 22. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. That's what's going to happen to this man. It's Obadiah 18. He's going to be removed from the earth after he serves his punishment. A thousand years of slavery. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lender, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. Who are they? Those are the Hebrew Israelites. You see that in Psalms 50 and 5, 78 and 5, Psalms 148, around about 13, 14. They are preserved forever but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. 
talking about the righteous seed, that sure seed. And there's this, we're on about this, we go around in circles here. I haven't been around that long, but we've certainly been around this circle where these uh, amongst us are so preoccupied and worried about the heathen and their fate. You see, there's a verse here, maybe we get to that. Wanting to save these uh, heathen nations, it's really point to the mental slavery that our folk are still in. They just can't break free. Uh, what's that? Uh, Stockholm Syndrome. You can't even save yourself, and yet you're worried about all these other nations. They're not partaking in our salvation. It's impossible. It's written from before the beginning of time. These people know this. Uh, let's get where Ezra was warned here, back in the Apocrypha. Second Ezra 9. Second Ezra 9. Where are we going to start from? Second Ezra 9, I think it's... Let's go from 7. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. This is the unchanging word. The Most High, whose name is Yahweh, his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. He cannot lie. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law while they yet had liberty, they had their freedom, and when as yet place of repentance was open to them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. This is written. It's not my words. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be perished, shall be punished. And when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. Another scripture, I think it's, uh, could be, it should be close here. Six, Second Ezra six. Where's that one that says the world was made for our sakes? Mm -hmm. Second Ezra six towards the end here. Well, it said they're reputed as nothing. Yes, here it is here. Let's go from 56. Second Ezra 6 and 56. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like as un be like unto spittle. You don't regard spittle. When you spit, you discard it. You don't even look around. And the master is saying these other nations who our folk are so worried about them. They can't stop talking about these people. What about them? What about them? They can have a part in it. This is madness. This is a form of uh, madness where you're showing empathy for your captors, your oppressors. Why are you even thinking? Why you don't regard spit? Why are you regarding these people? As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Lord, whose name is Yahweh, behold these heathen, which you're also worried about, which have begun to be reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to defy us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world. Ezra is asking here, how long shall this endure? Not for much longer, brother Ezra. The closing credits are going up. This man is about to get a visit. Happening now, happening now. The world is in turmoil. Where were we before that? I don't know if we finished reading uh, Psalms. Yes, we read that. Yes, let's just keep it short here. Let's go, let's wrap up with, um, Revelation. Let's just get this verse here. The nations are angry. It's everything stirring up here. Revelation eleven eighteen. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged. 
and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. That's what this wicked man is doing. The righteous seed, sure seed, from the beginning, he can't shift it. He can't do anything about his lot, his role in the movie. Let's just get some of this sifting here in Amos to finish up. Nine. Let's go from eight. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. See? It's that uh, Malachi 3 and 6, I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, Jacob is not consumed. See? I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. The two-thirds are going to be destroyed, but the remnant, they have been tried in the goal. That's what we refer to ourselves as the hopeful elect. I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord, for lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Jacob among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sift, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake us, nor prevent us. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Listen to this verse 12 here of Amos. 9. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That's the white man calling himself a bunch of names. Everywhere he conquers, he says, oh, I'm those people. But the truth is out there. It's not worked. And of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman, that's not the person doing all the work, that overtake the reaper who was getting all the benefits. We've worked for free for hundreds of years on all of these different empires. But now the chickens are coming home to roost. Most High is turning the thing around. And the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet wine. And all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. My people, Israel, turn it around. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. We're going to get the benefits of our own labor. And I will plant them upon their land. And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them. Said the Lord thy God, Yahweh, thy power. Let's hold it there for the lesson. Just a quick touch on this righteous seed, a sure seed. That's Jacob, and at this juncture in the story, in the movie, it's the elect, the one-third, and those dotted around who are slated for saving from the wrath, destruction, and fury that is about to be unleashed on the earth. So you've been listening to the righteous seed, a sure seed. Shalom, till the next lesson, no fear, no sorrow, no sorrow.